Hello and welcome back everyone to 3D Tutor video in which we're going to learn a little bit about Blender Opacity. And the first things first is you can see over here, they're completely black, they're not working. Well, what we need to do is firstly, we need to check if the opacity mask or if you're using a PNG, the transparency coming from the color map is actually properly connected from the image that is. So what I recommend you do is firstly go on to shading, Find yourself the material you're looking for so we can do so by opening up this tab over here at the bottom. Make sure you are within object mode and then find the material that you're working with. If you're making a new one, just go ahead and click new. Then you can use the material tab through here to apply it onto any one of the objects. Just going to enable the material preview mode like so. So this is the one I'm using for a raindrop. It looks a little bit more complex than usual, but that's all right. All we need to know is that this over here is a texture map for a raindrop. And as you can see over here, I'm using color to set it up with the base color and then alpha because this is a transparent image. I can use it as an alpha connection over here. Make sure you're using a principle BSDF as the shader supports the transparency. There are a variety of other ones. If we have it selected on the right hand side, Within the material tab, we can change this over here and just make sure you're using principle BDSF as something like glossy BSDF would not have it. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, once you just simply drag and drop your image over here, connect it to the color. The image itself uh, needs to be .png. If it's .jpeg, it will not allow transparency. Make sure that's uh, the case. And to check that we do have a transparency, we can use this window on the bottom left hand side over here. Once we import it, we can see it like so. And you can see that it's see through through the image itself. So that's exactly what we're looking for in order to make use out of the alpha. So once we do have it connected, you can see that it's still not working. So what's happening? Well, by default, your preview mode will not allow you to see any transparency. We can go to the render view, for example, and we can see it over here. So what's going on with the actual uh, normal preview mode of the material? When modeling or something like that, you ideally want to see it. So for example, over here, I have a scene that's a bunch of drops and everything is not transparent. Well, we can go ahead and fix that if we use the material with the selected for a raindrop for this case, we can scroll all the way down onto the viewport display. We can then go a little bit down and there's blend mode and shadow mode. Change how it's visible with the transparency. We have a couple of options, alpha clip, alpha hash and alpha blend. By default with semi-transparency with that somewhat partial transparency, I prefer to use alpha hash as this enabling it will give you this kind of a result and it's ideal for most of the cases. If you're using an alpha or transparency that's either, that is a complete cutout, I recommend you using another version called alpha clip, as this will basically cut out the entire section based on the transparency, and it's either transparent or non-transparent, as you can see over here. So that's what we're getting. That's the reason why we're getting this kind of an interesting shape over here. Let me actually go ahead and show you in this version like so. That's why we're getting these kind of sharp edges over here. But by changing this to the one used before, alpha hash, we're going to get the partial transparency, which in this case, it's exactly what we want. The final one is going to be alpha blend. This one is actually kind of gives you the same result as partial transparency, but it's a much cleaner result. If it's on a lower renders or a quick previews, I Personally, recommend you uh, using this one over here as it gives you a much cleaner result. Alpha hash, on the other hand, gives you a more accurate result, but it'll give you a bit more noisy type of result. If you're rendering out some high fidelity scenes, that's a more preferable use, especially in parts where it's, uh, it has a refraction, something like glass or something of the sort. So that's the difference. Now, as for shadow mode, I either tend to use uh, none or alpha clip, depending on the situation. For more performance, uh, I recommend you using none. For parts where you want uh, more reflection, more realism, something like on flowers or foliage, where you're using this kind of transparency, I recommend you turning on alpha clip, as it'll be great for just simple basic shadows. And yeah, that's pretty much it in order to use the transparency within your setups. Really hope you learned something new within this video. Thank you so much for watching. 
And if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to support us, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like the video and give us a comment down below as it really helps with the algorithm and getting our content more onto other people. And also, if you enjoy this kind of content, if you enjoy learning, I recommend you checking out our online courses as well. We take it through the entire setup of Blender projects and we teach you a variety of different things in the software along the way. And we also have geometry nodes. These allow you to speed up your workflow, giving you more creative freedom of your 3D environments and your 3D scenes. So I do recommend you checking them out as well, all of which can be found on our YouTube channel. So again, make sure to subscribe to our channel as more of the similar content are coming along the way. We're uh, planning to do a little bit more of tutorials as well, which will explain certain features of Blender, for example, in different from a different view. And yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you in a bit.